Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a joy to be with you. I'm so glad I'm here with you and to plant the seed of greatness in your life. Impact in your life. Rising above, going beyond anything you ever dreamed about. Amen. You dare to dream. You dare to do. And you dare to reach the destination. Amen. Let's pray. Father, reverently we come to you. Such a day like this, when you touch, transform, change the destiny of everyone for the better. Lord, I pray every word, every sentence will bring impact to every life in Jesus' name. We're beginning at the first rung of the ladder today and we're going to climb and climb to the height you have ordained for everyone here everywhere in our country in our continent africa beyond to the west everywhere take everyone up 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 higher in jesus name it is done we thank you because there will be a realization in jesus name we pray god bless you you can see that in the blessing of the lord we're coming to mark chapter 9 verse 23 mark chapter 9 verse 23 jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth i had that before i've read that before and i'm just wondering as we talk about going beyond limitations what do i believe because it says if thou can only believe number one you believe in god the creator of the whole universe and your own creator if you can only believe in him all things are possible to him to her who believes number two is goodness that god is good he never does evil he thinks about he, he thinks about good goodness if you believe in his goodness all things are possible to him who believes if you believe in his grace the grace unlimited that takes the lowest to the highest the grace unlimited that takes the poor to the height of prosperity if thou canst only believe his grace all things are possible to him who believes if you believe in your goal when you have a goal if you have a double mind can i can i not should i shouldn't i if you have a goal and you focus on that goal you believe in that goal you believe that you and the goal you are one inseparable he that believeth he has a goal and he believes in that all things are possible to him that believeth you believe his guidance he guides us he guides us and he guides us to the sin that will follow and to get our destiny. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you believe in growing, 
in growth. If you believe that you have not reached your climax, if you believe that you are growing and you are going to grow to that higher level and there is nothing that will stop you, he that believeth, you believe that there is growth and that you are marked for growth and you are destined for growth. To him that believeth, all things are possible. Jesus has told us about the Almighty God, about his greatness. If you believe in his greatness, there is nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he cannot do in your life. There's nothing he cannot do in my life. There is nothing and there is no height he cannot take me to, take you to. If you believe in his greatness, all things are possible to him that believe it. Readjust your life. Readjust your concept. And readjust your disposition. And believe you are going up. Jesus said unto you, if you can only believe all things are possible to you because you believe. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 13. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith. You see, all the people that have achieved anything in the Bible and all the people that have achieved anything in a contemporary world. There is one thing, faith. Faith in God, of course, and faith in themselves. They knew uh, they were not people that, you know, would say, I am a grasshopper, I am a rat, I'm a non-achiever. And my background doesn't favor achievement. They believe. And the people who are going to achieve, and the people who are going to get to that height, they're the people that have the same spirit of faith. It says we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. I believe, and therefore have I spoken. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe in this generation. We also believe in this congregation. My brother dear, are you a believer? My sister dear, are you a believer? Uh -huh. Well, right now, we also believe and therefore speak. Therefore speak. We believe. It says just to believe is not important. It's not the all important thing. Do something. Say something. Go forward. I believe because of that, number one, I pray. If you believe, you will pray. If you don't believe, you won't pray. I believe. Number one, I pray. Number two, I believe. So, I plan. If I truly believe in God, if I truly believe in his goodness, if I truly believe in his grace, if I truly believe in the goal, if I truly believe in his guidance, if I truly believe in growth, if I truly believe in the greatness to come, I pray, I plan, I prepare, I prepare. You prepare yourself if the farmer only prayed, but he didn't prepare the seed, in prepare, cultivate the land, nothing will come out. I believe, so I prepare. I believe, so I pursue. You pursue because you believe that is the destination there, that is the goal there, and you are a go-getter. Goal-getter, you are going to get it. 
because of that i pursue i believe so i persevere what if joseph had given up no use because nobody supports me nobody agrees with me nobody so nobody a kind of sponsors me but I perceive, I, I, pray, I, pray, I persevere. Number six, I pay the price for the price. I pay the price. It may be doing exercise. It may be running every morning. It may be that you tax yourself and you say, people like us, if that is where I am going, there's a price to pay. And I believe so i prayed the price for the price and then i believe so i possess i came this morning to talk to possessors Amen. you will possess Amen. there are three things we're looking at the message by the way the message is believing beyond the limitations of the natural youth the people that remain natural they are not connected with the supernatural they are not connected with the god of heaven they are just their natural self but we who are here will believe beyond the limitations of the natural youth we're looking at three things number one number one the boundaries of limitation for the natural youth what is the boundary what makes the limitation for a youth a natural youth and so he cannot go beyond that the bounds the fence and the perimeter that holds him down and he cannot go beyond number two is the breaking of limits for newborn youths the breaking of limits for the newborn youth number three is the breakthrough it's coming the breakthrough beyond limitations as noble Youths. Let's come to number one. Number one, the boundaries of limitation for the natural youth. Now, natural people, men, women, boys, girls, natural people, the people who do not have anything added from heaven to them or accept what mama papa had given them through the genes and the chromosomes if that's all you have and you are natural you have boundaries you have limitation look at jeremiah chapter 13 verse 23 it says can the ethiopian change his skin the ethiopian what papa Mama had contributed to him the brain, the stature, the mind, that's all he has. Can he change his skin or the leopard, his spots? Then may he also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Uh, let's look at Romans here now. Romans chapter 7. Reading from verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, natural. The way I came out from my mother and the thing I carry, I'm carnal. And it says, sold under sin. Look at verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, I can set goals. I'm reaching there. I'm going there. It says, what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that's what I do. Then in verse 16, it says, even I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that 
it is good. What's my problem then? Verse 17. In verse 17, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. A man that is natural. The woman that is natural. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of things, of course, that we do. We rise, we we'll walk about, we we'll move about, we we'll look, we we'll see, we even understand some things, but when it goes beyond that limit, we're lost. The thing that ought to make us arise and move up to the mountain top. That's what we're looking for. And that is what we lack. It says, it's not me. There is something that dwells in me that when I will arise and then rise to higher ground, that thing like the force of gravity pulls me down. Uh, let's look at Proverbs chapter 5. And we're reading there from verse 22. In Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22, it says, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. It doesn't take an out, outside force to bring him down, outside power to bring him down. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holding, he shall be bound, he shall be imprisoned, he shall be hindered with the cords of his own sin. Uh, let me quickly tell you seven things that hinder us. The seven things that limit us, the, the, the cords of limitation. Number one is the corruption of life. We come to this line and we'll see that the order of the day and the thing is the corruption in the world. Anywhere we go, the corruption is there that holds us down. The corruption of life. Number two is the contamination of the lawless. Any community you go, uh, the lawless people there, they don't have any goal, they don't have any mind to succeed, they don't have anywhere they are going, they are there, they are there. In society, they are there, they are always there. And you can be contaminated by them that even though you had high hopes before, and you are going through, you are going to get to that destination. If you are surrounded by those people, lawless people, there is the contamination of the lawless. Number three, the coldness of the lukewarm. The coldness of lukewarmness. Any, any excitement you have, you come from a meeting like this, and with everything you have, there's an excitement, and there's a hope, and there's a desire, and I want to get there. I learned of Mr. So-and-so, he got there. Mrs. So-and-so, she got there. The God of grace and the God of heaven, he will help me. As you come out, you meet, uh, you know, the cold, lukewarm people. They don't have anywhere they're going. They don't have anything they're going to achieve. And they say, ah, what happened to you? Where are you coming from? Book, book, book. Reading, reading, reading. Planning, sketching, and doing all those things. What happened? They want to bring coldness to your excitement. They will not succeed. Yeah. Number four is the constitution of laziness. The constitution. Uh, you understand constitution? Uh, that, that's our mind. That's our habit. That's our life. And it's like we like to sit down. We like to browse the internet. We like to see all those pictures and everything uh, in the social media. We want, to, we want to listen to useless news that doesn't concern us. And that constitution of laziness does not allow us to concentrate on the essentials of life. Those things bring limitation into our lives. Number five is the companionship with loafers. 
loafers. They are here and there. They are up and down. They are to and fro. And they have nothing doing. They have nothing achieving. They come to knock on your door. Are you there? Are you there? Uh, have you heard? Then they begin that uh, conversation. And any goal you add, any system you add, any plan you add, you are going to achieve. Did you hear? We must have uh, goal. And when you think of goal, you're thinking of uh, you had that young girl of 16. In 16 years, in 10 years time, uh, here is where I want to be. Here is what I want to achieve. And 10 year goal, you have to break that down to five year slot and the five years you have to break down what do i do this year one year goal and monthly goal and weekly goal and daily goal so that i do today what i need to do that will get me to the next day i do this week what i need to do that will get me to the month i do this month what i need to do that will make me achieve what i need to achieve for the year and i am measuring measuring smart goals i am measuring them i am assume I'm, I'm seeing that i achieve the daily one i achieve the weekly one realizable realistic steps that i take and then it is time tested and it is time because i'm aiming at 10 years five years one year one month we need to do that but if you are in companionship with loafers how are you going to make that there are things you need to get out of your life loafers the people they don't have your complexion they don't have your own commitment and they don't have the goal that you have let them go and join all loafers i announce to everyone around me i'm talking about you and i'm talking for you i said i'm talking for you you announce to everyone i am no more a loafer God bless your voice. And then I come to number six, the counterfeit of love. Love is a wonderful word. Love is a great word. But you know, anything that comes into the hands of a man who is black on the inside, black on the outside, any good thing that comes to the hand of a dirty person they turn that thing into something undesirable yes there is counterfeit money counterfeit currency there is counterfeit love the people say i love you i love you tell the truth you're lost after her that's not love that's counterfeit and what makes people to stop that they cannot look at their goals anymore and they cannot focus on their goals anymore as they're growing up and their goals should be growing up with them they have the counterfeit of love which is loss and now number seven the covenant with lots of losers there are people that make themselves lords they call themselves by different names on different campuses they call themselves by different names in different communities actually they are gangs actually they are secret calls actually they are in the power in the throes in the claws of the power of darkness and they are lords over losers they make themselves lords over the people that lose in life and if you get into covenant with the lords of losers you are gone but today you come back yeah. there is a path that leads to victory there is a path that leads to success there is a path that leads to achievement and i'm calling you come back there in your life will begin yeah. you will achieve yeah. you'll overcome 
and all these cords of limitation will be cut off and broken away from your life in Jesus' name. It is done. I will see you on the top. Number two. Number two, we're looking at the breaking of limits for new born youths. The breaking of limits for newborn youths. Now, somebody asked, how is it that those who are in the world but not in the Lord, how do they achieve more than the people who are in the Lord? Uh, you understand? There is the law of success. If somebody from outside the family of the children of God, if he comes in and he looks at the principles and he goes by the principles as much as he can, he will have, because it's the law, it's the principle of success. It's just like each good food balanced diet it will nourish every part of your body if a believer does that it will it's a law if an unbeliever does that it will happen because it's a law and if it says read your book plan your time do your assignment investigate those who have succeeded and then integrate your plan and integrate your lifestyle into the principles of success. If a believer does that, he'll get there faster. If an unbeliever drills himself and he says, I'm going to get this in, he'll get at least a bit of it. And so the Lord makes the newborn youth higher. If you are born again, you are higher. Your brain is not affected by marijuana. You should do better. Your mind is not clogged with worthless things, nightclubs. You should do better. You have more time on your hand that you can spend and do something great because the other people, the other young people, a lot of things make demand on their time. And now that you are born again, I'm happy to walk with you. I'm happy to say, this is the way, walk ye therein, and by the grace of God, others have got there. You are the next on the line. Hey, look at this in First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 1, Wherefore laying aside all malice. Uh, malice it takes a lot from us, our time our emotion, our feeling, our thinking faculty. And when you are thinking negative about that person and you are, you know, ruminating over it and turning it over, over in your mind, a lot of precious time you throw away. And it says, now you are born again, lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings amen. amen and then in verse 2 and then it says a newborn babes as newborn babes desire this is her milk of the word that she may grow thereby you will grow I said you will grow. All the things that limit growth in our lives, today is that day. We're going to drop it here. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man, let me say if any youth, let me say if any boy, let me say if any girl, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. At least I know something. The new 
is different from the old. I know something. The new is better than the old. I know something. The new brain is sharper than the old, old cranky brain. I know something. The new is more desirable than the old. And the new is more fervent. The new is more goal-getting than the old. When you become born again, born anew, born afresh, born from heaven, the Lord puts something in your heart, in your mind, in your brain, in your vision, in your focus, and you are going to be new. Higher than the old. Better than the old. Faster than the old. Uh, have you seen the new, um, you know, the, the new uh, computers they're making now? And then we have the internet G5. When it was only G2, how slow it was. You're searching for something. Now that's the old. Now we have the new PPP. As you come there, the thing has come out. I said it has come out. A new brain. A new mind. A new focus, a new ability in your life in Jesus' name. Because, therefore, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things are passed away, old regrets are passed away, old failures are passed away. Old hindrances are passed away. The old life. If there is a little huddle, only six inches high. Old time will stumble on the huddle of six inches. Old life. If there is a little huddle, only one foot will stumble and fall. But now, as we become new, New strength, new ability. The hurdles are still there, old hurdles, but we're new, new strength. And we have a new jumping strength. We overcome the hurdles now. Because now all things have become new in your life. Your thinking is now new. Your aspiration is now new. And the passion inside you to be what God has created you to be, that is now new. In the old life, little things for little minds, they stopped us, discouraged us. But now, your discouragement is gone. You're free. You're now free to achieve. You aspire and you achieve in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this. Look at this in Psalm 51. Psalm 51 tells us in verse 10. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me the new man the new creature has a new attitude a new attitude to life a new attitude to work a new attitude to responsibility a new attitude to what i need to do, do today in the direction of my goal and then tomorrow a new day brings a new attitude again and little drops of water make tell me a mighty ocean a day at a time a day at a time a day at a time you will get there uh, look at verse 12 in verse 12 restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. In Galatians chapter 6, reading here from verse 15, it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth 
any sin nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creature. The Lord will wash you thoroughly. He'll make you a new creature. You're new in your thoughts. You're new in your mind. You're new in your focus. You're new in the drive inside you, in the passion inside you. You're not the sluggish one that wakes up in the morning, I am tired. What have you done this morning that you are tired? That tiredness I command you. Go out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Excitement to live. And the power, the passion to live. And the passion to run the race that is set before you. He says in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. A new creature. A new creature. Now, what new creation? When he says a new creature, it's a new creation. What new creation are you going to have now? And then that will take you to the place the Lord has ordained for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Number one, new desires. New desires. You know, we, there were things we desired when you were a little baby you desired toys if you were still desiring that at 20 that's strange that's strange the toys of the little life when I was a child I thought as a child I desired as a child I moved and a child but now that I become a man I think of other things number one new desires number two a new direction a new direction you see there are many roads in the city there are rough roads and with pit, uh, pit holes, and there are good roads. Now that you are a new creature, what do you have? You have a new direction. All those inventors, what direction did they follow? All those good godly men and women, what direction did they follow? All those achievers, what direction did they follow? A new direction. Number three is a new diligence. A new diligence. There are many uncompleted buildings in every town. You know why? The builders were not they were, they were not diligent to see their construction to the end of the building. And there are many lives like that. They start something good, but they don't continue. They're not diligent. They're not firm in their purpose. But now, the quality of the new creature is that we have a new diligence. This thing, this good thing, that has started in your life, you will be diligent, you will carry on. Yeah. You will not be up and down to and fro that you cannot do something to the very end. You know, you start a course, C-O-U-R-S-E. You start a course, and then after reading a few chapters of the books, you pack up. That's not diligence. You start a good project and you funded it. And then after you spent almost a fortune, there's something that shifts your mind to another thing. That's not diligence, but you have something. You have a decision. You have a desire. And you have the determination that you are getting through. I'm going through. I'm going through. Whatever happens, I am going through. You are going through in Jesus' name. Number four is a new dedication to duty. You know, we'll not always love duty. We'll not always enjoy duty. The enjoyment will be at the end of the achievement. But whether we enjoy it or not, 
the original excitement. When we go to that situation, you understand? Uh, let me illustrate with our students who get, you know, you've uh, written the exam and you, you were eager. And then you saw that you passed. And now you're admitted to the college, to the institution, to the university. What excitement you have. On the first day, you enter in there, you have excitement. Now you start the classes and what you're hearing in the first class I never heard of that they never taught me that in my high institution in my secondary school and now I thought the man will go from the known to the unknown this is totally strange and different you are not the one to lecture the lecturer you are the one to stay there and say this is what is before me I must take this and run with it you must not allow the excitement you had at the beginning when you entered you must not allow that that excitement to die down you have a new dedication to duty number five is a new dynamite a new dynamite there must always be dynamite inside you that whatever is coming there and is building up or stratas and eventually will be a rock and you'll not be able to move on there's a dynamite on the inside that will blow everything discouraging blow everything away from your life so that as you're moving on you move to the next level there is a second degree dynamite and you move to the next level there is a third degree dynamite and you move to the fourth level and there there is a fourth a degree up to degree four dynamite in your life that no matter where you are and no matter the thing that is building up that could weigh you down there is always an appropriate dynamite that will blow everything away it will start today yeah. I said it will start today yeah. number six is a new discipline a new discipline when you sit at your desk and you want to get something done in the past when you sit down for 15 minutes and you do something you're doing something if the thing is not finished in 15 minutes that's a pity because there, there's something in you that wants to get up there's something you that wants to go and play football there's something you that wants to telephone a friend there's something you that wants to check up your email and those distractions you bring into your life by yourself but when you have the discipline and you say this hour this is what i am going to do there is no policeman that is trailing me, that is compelling me. Stay down there. I have the policeman on the inside of me. And I say, this period of time, I am here. And this scene will be done. Do you set dead lines for what you have now when we're in the primary school we're going to set the deadline so the teacher had to set the deadline when you are coming tomorrow you should have done this homework you should come and submit and if not i'll discipline you we add the discipline from the outside now when we get to the secondary school the outside discipline goes less because the inward discipline is now being developed and the teachers they still give us assignments and they still tell us what to do but they don't have the external discipline on us now we get to university and now they treat us like adults they give us assignment if we they may not even ask for submission except it's a special assignment we need to turn in but 
They are not going to discipline us. And the, the lecturer will just say, okay, you didn't have time. I didn't have time. He will not ask us. That's not his business. Did you go to a nightclub? Did you sleep all through the night? Did you check up in the library? Now we have, you know, the search engine that will search for this. You didn't even make any trial. Well, he'll just have the questions and leave you to your own personal discipline or indiscipline. When we come in this new life and we become new creatures in Christ, new discipline in our lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, can, can you discipline even your, the telephone there and say for this hour, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to check up email. I'm not going to call anybody. And if they call, I have to finish this before I pick the call. That's discipline. Or do you wake up in the morning? As you wake up in the morning, the first thing you pick, your phone is, you know, nearby there by your bedside, and you are, you know, scrolling all the emails and all the missed calls and everything. There's no discipline there. You take the first 30 minutes, looking at the phone you have not even had your own morning devotion you have not spoken to God are you busy or are you the person that while you are even sleeping maybe you slept at 11 11 30 and the phone is there and there's somebody somewhere that does not control his own time and his own use of the phone by 12.45, he calls. You say, my goodness, who is that? But you still pick it. You didn't leave that until the morning, and then you, you answer that. It may be disturbing news they're giving you that will not allow you to sleep. And then about 30 minutes after, there is a sound of a text that came in. You picked up again. Where is our discipline? How are we going to run our lives? Are we going to live our lives in the hands of other people that want to disturb, they want to distract, and they want to destroy our future? Let there be a new discipline in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Number seven, a new destiny a new destiny for you my brother for you my sister everyone here i pray and i believe there'll be a new destiny for everyone in jesus name yeah. destiny is related to destination you will get to a new destination yeah. you might have to replan your life redirect your life you might have to sit down analyze everything if i keep on doing what i've always done that landed me in failure where would i get you now i am not going to fail i was saying that on your behalf you will not fail this life you will achieve something significant. Something successful. Something satisfactory in Jesus' name. New desires. Amen. A new direction. Amen. A new diligence. Amen. A new dedication to duty. Amen. A new dynamite inside you. Amen. A new discipline. Amen. A new destiny. A new destination. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three. The breakthrough beyond limitations as noble youths. Beyond limitations. Had we come to that? Let's look at the example of Jesus in John chapter 4, reading from verse 34. In John chapter 4, reading from verse 34, Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My will, my plan, my decision, 
my aspiration, my joy, my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent, that sent me, the father that sent him had set the goal, had revealed his will, had showed his plan and purpose. And he said, I align with that. I agree with that. I go with that. And to finish his work, he woke up every morning and then he went to a solitary place to pray and was asking how far have I gone in the work he gave me to do? How much is left to finish the work he gave me to do? You wake up every morning and you ask yourself, what did he give me to do? What goal, what purpose, what plan, what will did he have for me? How far have I gone? How much remains? You look at if there are different projects you are handling. Project A, how far to the end? Project B, how far to the end? Which one needs more resources? Which one needs more attention? And which one needs more concentration? And which one needs more supervision? You're looking at that in your life so that you will know how far you are to the finishing of the work. Now, it's not just that we finish the period. You know, many people can finish. We are supposed to be there for three years, and you spend, four year, you spend two years already. And it's not just saying it remains one year. It remains one year. No. The thing you have to do for those three years, how much of those things have you accomplished? That's what you mark. That's what you measure, and that is what you want to go through. And Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You will finish. Amen. How many people in our world have died without finishing? Think about that. Because of bad association, they died before their time. They were not thinking of the project. They were not thinking of the purpose. They were sent on earth to do. And they died before finishing. How many people by bad diet? Too much sugar. Too much, uh, you know, water, uh, sugar, liquid drinking. They have spoiled themselves with obesity as well as diabetes. And eventually, they die before their time. Or before they die, they are not seen, uh, you know, end time sickness. And eventually, they are not able to concentrate on what they need to do. It doesn't, it's not discipline required in what you eat in where you go, in the association you make, so that by the grace of God, nothing, no sickness or disease will terminate your life before finishing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's come to Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, watch well, thou have me to do. The soul that became Paul. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, you will never do anything substantial, anything significant, if you're lying down all the time. Lying down all the time. You refuse to get up from the bed in the morning. And then even after taking your breakfast, you must sit down and study, not only read, study the newspapers and compare news with news. What are you going to arise and go to work? I'm coming, I'm coming. One hour has gone, I am coming, I'm coming. Are you going to take an exam on what you are reading in those newspapers? Eventually, you go to the place of work, and even there, it is, you know, the daily gossip that many people are involved in. When are you 
going to do the work you are appointed to do? And then you come back and you are watching, if you are not watching television, you are watching social media, and you are looking at this and that, where will life go at that rate? But Saul asked, he, he, he asked, he says, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise, go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do the word must what thou must do this is an obligation from heaven what you must do look at another uh, thing here we're looking at the word of god the must in our lives. He tells us in, uh, in Acts of the Apostles, he tells us in verse 16, verse 16 says, in verse six, uh, chapter 16, verse 30, it says, and he brought them out and said, says, what must I do to be saved? There is a must in our lives look at uh, chapter 14 verse 22 in chapter 14 verse 22 it tells us there continue and it says confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must you see in our lives uh, there must be some very important compulsory things not optional that must be done he says we must through the through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god you will enter into kingdom victory into kingdom triumph into kingdom into the kingdom as a conqueror in jesus name must you need to write this down m u s t minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly you see if we if we're going to do what the lord has assigned there is a must m u s t you minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly m number two now mortify unclean sensuality thoughtfully they take time anything that takes your thought takes time anything that takes and seizes your mind takes time anything that will monopolize the function of your brain all those things they will hinder you because you have only one brain only one mind only one heart only one pursuit and once that is divided you are not going to achieve much therefore you mortify unclean sensuality truthfully number three is to maximize undeniable success trajectory success trajectory that is the trajectory the path that leads us to success maximize that i did that it succeeded how did i do that and the how you did that maximize that repeat that but habits had been the thing of the past this good habit now see this success has put a smile on my face. And that thing that gave me that success, I maximize that. Number four, master uncontrollable self totally. Master uncontrollable self 
totally. You see that the most in our lives, something is happening there. And it's none of my business. It's none of your business. And the people to take care of the thing there, uh, they are there. And they're already looking into that. But there's this uncontrollable self. I must be there. What's happening there? What's happening there? And then uh, you leave your work. By the time you come back to that work, you have lost connection with the, uh, with the progress you ought to make. Uh, there is, you know, you are at the college or the university and there is uh, news happening, uh, you know, in the tribe, in the village. The people to deal with it, the chiefs are there, the others are there and, uh, you know, but you leave your studies and you want to find out what's happening over there. If you are playing a game and you want to win in that game, in the audience, the people who are spectators, there will be a lot of things coming from there, coming from there. If you shift your attention from the goal and from the race you are running and you are looking at them, you are not likely to finish well. But I'm talking to people who are going to finish well. Because of that, you master uncontrollable self totally. Number five is to model on debatable salvation transparently. The salvation you have, you model that or the salvation in the Bible. And you do that transparently and the Lord will assist you in Jesus' name. What the most in your life? The most in my life, in your life. Number six, maintain upward steps tenaciously not that you take two steps forward and three steps backward not that this week the achievement this is commendable and this is wonderful because you've taken three steps forward and then the following week in your time of resting and time of you know a kind of uh, dissipating uh, all your energy and everything you take four steps backward no you are maintaining upward steps tenaciously and now number seven uh, motivate on steady subordinates transformationally the people around you it's not only that you're successful your life inspires them your life uh, makes them to have uh, aspiration and ambition and they say as I look at you know he never does any redundant thing he never does any un unimportant thing he never does anything you know, that you will say well yes it's time of wisdom is time of foolishness he does everything that moves him forward he motivates me he encourages me he inspires me that at the god who has helped him will help me you will become an example to many other people a light bearer to many other people and encourage me to achieve for many other people people will come to you and say tell me the secret of your life and well, just looking at you they will get the secret and everything you have learned today they have motivated us we should not be unsteady anymore and we who are subordinates will now come to the top yeah. I, must. I must I must I must and there will be a breakthrough beyond limitations in your life in Jesus name why don't you rise up now and let the heavens know and let the heavens hear that we have heard something and we are taking that thing out of this place a must in my life a must in your life a duty a devotion and diligence in your life that you will sail through in Jesus name open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer if there's anything you need to repent of anything you need to repair 
any sin you want to readjust, tell the Lord, Lord, help me. You believe. You believe in God. You believe in his goodness. He is good to all. He is good to all. You believe in his grace. His grace is available for you and for everyone. You believe in the goal. The goal he has set before you. Which you have aligned with. You believe you are now a goal getter. You believe in his guidance. He will guide you with his word, with his spirit. He will guide you with your conscience. With your conscience, he will guide you. You believe in growth. You know, you are not at the end of the calling of God in your life. You'll grow. And you believe in his greatness. And his greatness will make you great. You believe. Because of that you pray. You believe. Because of that you plan. You believe. Because of that you prepare. You believe. Because of that you pursue. You believe. Because of that you persevere. You will not be tired. And the strength of the Lord will carry you through. You believe because of that you pay the price for the price. You believe and eventually you are going to possess. In the beginning of a new day in your life, your life, and you have a new desire, a new desire. You're now going in a new direction, and the Lord will give you a new diligence. And dedication to duty. A new dynamite in your heart. Fire in your bones. A new discipline. And a new destiny. Now address the most in your life. You minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly, completely. Mortify unclean sensuality truthfully. You maximize undeniable success trajectory. You master uncontrollable sale totally. You model undeniable salvation transparently. You maintain upward steps tenaciously. And you motivate on study, on steady, subordinates transformationally. The hand of the Lord is upon you. The grace of the Lord is available for you. The goodness of God will never fail in your life. It will take you to the desired destination. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has answered your prayer. Say it now. The Lord has answered my prayer. 
The past is forgotten. The past is forgiven. A new thing starting in every life today in Jesus' name. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister, to the high, limitless achievement that he has for you in life. Resolve that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We well, thank you for the revelation you have given us. We are asking, O oh Lord, in your life, we we'll begin today in Jesus' name. Anything in the past that will hinder, that will hold us down, that will limit what you have ordained for our lives, Lord, we pray by the blood of Jesus, wash them away in Jesus' name. Do something new in every life. I pray, Lord, no regrets anymore. Amen. No looking back anymore. Amen. No sorrows anymore. Amen. We pray that you renew us from the inside to the outside in Jesus' name. Amen. Take every sin away. Amen. Take every sickness away. Bring success, significance, satisfaction to every life in Jesus' name. I pray every life will be pleasing to God and pleasing to heaven. That our pursuit will get to that destination, that destiny that the Lord has earmarked and ordained for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, make your people, everyone without exception, to quit the past, to focus on the future. And everything that is needed from heaven, from earth, grant to everyone. Make a success of every life. Beyond the limitations of the past, take us through. Take us up. And take us on until everyone, without exception, gets to that destination of life that is desirable, that is pleasurable, that is wonderful, that is joyful and happy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done in your life.